on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. Hey guys, how you doing? So yeah, there <laughs> supposed to be a debate, but um, Flurf can't tech as normal. Uh, so uh, I've just told him to reset his computer and to try again. I think the problem is that he's using some kind of Mac computer from the 1920s because uh, he, he just can't get it to join. And the thing is with vMix, it, it's so simple. You just click a link and join. There's no other systems. There's no cameras, n nothing. Um, as long as he's got a computer that can use Chrome, he just clicks the link, makes sure he has a camera on. He doesn't even have to display the camera after that, but he needs to see a camera. I've told him this. And then it joins. And he can't do it. So, yeah, he is, as the, the chat's saying, we've got someone that is hashtag glitch made. We'll give him, um, <clears throat> we'll give him a bit of time to try and get it sorted. In the meantime, guys, how is everybody doing? Let's just have a little bit of a chat, I suppose. Um... Hello to Stringer News, hello to Gary, uh, hello to Heat Shield, N-A-N-A. -A. Um, how you all doing, guys? Nice to see you in my chat, as normal. Maybe worth doing a live debunk of Fuck It Words New Parallax video in the meantime. I've not seen it yet. I will try and get that done. Uh, I'd like to just have a look at the videos first. Let's wait and see if he can actually join... Hey, Jay Brown, how you doing? Hey, William Sines. <laughs> Congrats on your huge arse view time, FTFE. No, thank you. Yeah, I can't I can't believe I've got a million views. That's, um, that's blown me away, frankly. Why would a million people want to watch this ugly mug with, uh, with man boobs? Hey, Tex Aiden, how you doing, bud? William Sines. Edward Smith, Alexander Mukau, J. Doe. I'm just waiting for him. I mean, resetting a PC is probably going to be a monumental task for him. <sighs> um, his, uh, I said, <laughs> I messaged him. I said, my God, why can't first tech? He says, because we deal in real world, world stuff, not computers all day. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Kang024, yes, I will debate Nathan Oakley, go get him, I'll debate him right now. The thing is that Nathan Oakley is a little bitch-made person that does not step outside of his mute button. But if he comes here, I will guarantee him there will be no mute button. Sorry, Aussie Globehead, I cannot give you your brain cells back, they are now property of the Flat Earthers. Craig, that last debate was painful. I, I wanted to jump in so much. Uh, I think the multi-person did an admirable job, though. Uh, let's see. Any word? What's your channel? Oh, my God. Fight the Flat Earth. You were just on it. So, I don't know if he, he can join. So, is there any Flat Earthers there that would like to debate me? Um, I know Nathan Oakley won't be there because he is a little bitch. But if any other flat earthers would like to come and talk to me, I'm more than willing. But uh, what do you think of my new setup? I, I quite like it. Again, thanks to Creaky Blinder for doing all this. And then VMix makes it look all funky. Um... Yeah, Nathan Oakley is just a thieving, lying shill. Stephen Ten, how you right? He probably wants another link by now. I mean, I've I've given him the link plenty of times. He's he's asked for the channel, so I'm assuming he's going to come and come in the chat and go. I can't join. Man, why? Nathan Oakley is now claiming Google Earth is their flat Earth model. Well, that's lovely considering you use a globe. <laughs> no, Gary, you can't pretend to be a flurf. I wouldn't 
want you to try and be that dumb. Um, it, it, it's painful. Oh. Not working. Oh my goodness. Come on, man. I'll tune in for now. So he's just going to be in the chat because he can't join. Oh. I'm just going to put a shake in my head. Because joining Femix is the easiest thing in the bloody world. Uh, anyone want to come in and have a chat? If there's no flat earthers, I'll just uh, hang around for a few minutes and then I guess I'll go to bed. <laughs> come on, Nathan, debate FTFE. He will let you talk, which is probably why you won't debate him because all you do is point and laugh and say fallacy every other word. Yeah, that's all Nathan Oakley knows. Oh, well, it does appear that the flurf now is glitch made. Hashtag glitch made. The, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to call the guy a liar, but when they all of a sudden can't join when they've been talking such a big game in the chat, it's just a bit like, oh, they don't like being called out. And so, oh, oh no, he's actually going to debate me. I'm going to pretend I can't join. I mean, that's just speculating. I don't know, but joining a VMix is so easy. <laughs> Did he try restarting his interweb? Yes, I told him to restart his entire computer. Yeah, um, thoughts for Jay Brown. Pineapple is certainly not an appropriate pizza topping. I mean, why would you just don't don't do that ever? My favorite pizza is spicy chicken. Mm, I want pizza now. Andy Brooks, Stephen Warrior is a vile human being. I completely agree. Uh, hey, Nathan, would would you like to come in and have a chat with me? Because, um, yeah, uh, the, the guy's glitch made. Nathan, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, send, I'll, I'll email you a link, Nathan, because... Um, I think I proved to you yesterday that even though you know I don't like the flat earth, I can be fair. I mean, don't expect me to be nice, but you're more than welcome to come in, so I will give you a link. You would be a dead carcass eater. Don't know what that means. Uh, S Steve Ten have uh, the Aristophanes project is going out of bloody control. I have like over 500 emails I haven't even opened about it. I'm going to spend the next few days um, getting that sorted and creating another uh, like new list for it and stuff because that's a lot of people that want to join in so we can accurately measure the planet. All right, Nathan, email incoming. Uh, do, 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 do. If I can remember how to open Gmail. <laughs> Nathan Thompson. So it looks like Nathan Thompson's coming in. Let's uh, change the name of the of the debate. This could be fun, guys. All right, that's all ready for Nathan. <laughs> Sardot, Nathan Thompson is as stupid as they come. I mean, I guess I could try to be nice to my opponent, but... <laughs> Green Billion says he can he couldn't join and now he can't even log in on my phone to type except he just typed that. Yeah, um surprised Nathan to come in after 
is the beat with cats. Just waiting for him to join. <laughs> Nathan Thompson's trying to redeem himself. Oh no, Nathan Thompson, what a turd. <laughs> Hey, Nathan. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Cool. Right, I'll just get rid of that picture on your screen one sec. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Can you minimize it? I don't mind if you keep it there. I can make it uh, a bit smaller for you. Right on. That's cool. One second. We'll stick that down over the side for you. And let me just get that centered on there. Do uh, we want camera just over slightly? Uh, Nathan, move it over. And me a little bit bigger. There we go. Perfect. All right, Nathan, thank you for joining. Um, how'd you feel after your debate with Cats yesterday? <clears throat> I feel great. How do you think he did? I, I thought he did very well. I thought he gave uh, a lot of very good evidences for the glue. Um, I mean, I know you don't accept the evidences because he can't physically demonstrate something there and then in that fashion. But I mean, I, I don't think you could deny that they were evidences for the glue, whether you agree with them or not. Well, if you can't demonstrate them, then you don't have any scientific evidence. I mean, there is lots of demonstrations of gas pressures without containers. Hey, um, teams already said to you about the sulfur hexafluoride. Um, I mean, storm systems themselves are demonstrations of gas wait, pressure wait, without containers. Wait. Flat Earth, before you rattle off what you think are a bunch of evidences, can we just do them one by one? <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I mean, that, that's fine. Sorry. Uh, anyway, just um, before I get started, just take a minute, introduce yourself to, to the people watching. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Hey, if you don't know who I am, my name is Nathan Thompson. Email NathanPPL at Yahoo.com. My Instagram is The Globe is Flat. And YouTube, Nathan Thompson, and I run a Facebook group called The Official Flat Earth and Globe Discussion. There's no cursing or insults allowed. There's 125,000 members. And we've been adding about 500 to 1,000 people a day ever since the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve came out. And the group member count doesn't go up. So I find that interesting. Um, it's just more of the censorship against the flat earth because they don't want people knowing we're being lied to about where we live fair enough um i mean yeah. interest, interesting you bring up the documentary because um i i like using parts of that documentary as evidences frankly uh so what what, what would you like See, that's to talk your about? problem that's your problem fight the flutter is you don't know what scientific evidence is ah well see that is where we would thoroughly disagree uh what so do you say observations cannot be scientific evidence well observations are observations you're not empirically proving a cause of an effect which is what the scientific method does well, so yeah you can make observations all day long but if you're not formulating a hypothesis with a observed natural phenomenon and conducting experiments where you manipulate the cause of that variable then you're just making an observation you're just taking a measurement you, you're, you're just you were almost right. Rock. You were almost right until you said the manipulate the cause part, because the scientific method doesn't require you to manipulate the cause. Being ob observing the cause is a perfectly acceptable thing to do. For instance, when we notice perturbations in the orbit of Uranus, uh, we wait, 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 wait. Let me just let me just finish on. the thought, and then then when you can wait. Fight the flat Earth. When you say observe a cause, yeah. You observe the effect. Okay, right. Let let me talk through my my point, and then you can try and you, know, you say where you think I'm wrong. 
So we, we noticed, we observed perturbations in the orbit of Uranus. So we formulated a hypothesis that there was another body that was having a gravitational attraction. We did some maths, made a prediction, and we experimented by waiting until the right time and looking in the point where we predicted that it would be. And lo and behold, it was. And that you cannot get more empirical than making an observation, using an observation to formulate a hypothesis and the prediction, and then clarifying that prediction with actual observations and evidence that has happened. You know, that, that is literally the definition of the scientific method. You don't need to physically manipulate the cause yourself, i.e. the independent variable. The independent variable can be something that's observed or time, for instance. So, so Venus at that time, was that, was that able to be observed anywhere on Earth? Uh, we didn't know that it was there. We made a prediction. Okay, that, wait, that, can, can I recreate the, that? Can I yeah. recreate that today? Absolutely. You could yourself monitor Uranus and you could observe the perturbations in its orbit yourself. And then you could do the maths yourself and derive a location where you think a, another gravitational body would be. You could then do the observations and check in that place that you have looked to see if your prediction was correct. That is perfectly repeatable okay. by by anybody. You said we did this. When, when did you guys do that? Flight well, flatters? I haven't done this myself. This is how the this is how oh, Venus was discovered, and wow. the, the but another I thing is I haven't done this myself. I but that science doesn't require everybody to do everything themselves. It's a it's an observation that You're can right. be repeated by everything. Believe. Sorry, it just requires you to believe, right? Fight no, the absolutely you not. Got to believe that they no, did it because I could do the maths to verify it, but. You it's, could. It's could, but, uh, but, but the thing is, it's be, been done. It's been done be, many, be, many times. You know and um, it's been done many, many times. So why would I have to do it again? Because science doesn't require you to do every experiment yourself because you'd never get anything done. You don't have to physically do every experiment yourself. If you want to verify it, that's absolutely fine. You can go and do it. Nathan, if you wanted to disprove that hypothesis, then you could do the experiment yourself and prove that it's not where we said it would be. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, it, it's yeah, perfectly so acceptable for everybody that to- prove that Venus, a light in the sky, is a light in the sky, cool. What, what well, does that do for your argument about the shape of the Earth being a spinning, tilted lava ball orbiting around the sun and blasting through an infinite vacuum of space which violates the second law of thermodynamics? Well, it doesn't violate so, the second law of thermodynamics um, at all because entropy is a thing and entropy works just fine when gravity is included and we know can gravity you demonstrate is... gas pressure without a container yes absolutely how do you think an airplane gets off the ground so you're telling me an airplane is a demonstration of gas pressure without a container absolutely that how how does an airplane generate lift well in this example, where's the gas pressure? The gas pressure is underneath the wings. Okay. Well, that's all contained. No. Well, um, it, the bottom of it isn't contained. There's just one thing there. Yeah, the gas pressure is definitely contained. We have a container above the atmosphere. So without asserting your religious belief about the sky being a vacuum, could you demonstrate somewhere here on Earth a ball with gas pressure conforming to it? Oh, you've just moved the without... goalpost nicely there. Because well, what, what, what you're doing there is we asking for thinking. asking for something that you know is not possible with on our model. Because if I had a ball here, for instance, this little globe that I've got, what? okay, right? Now, listen, let, let me explain. You want me to show you gas pressure around this ball, right? That's what you want me to do right now, yeah? No, no. No, no, no. Show me any gas pressure anywhere without a container. I just did. An airplane creates lift by having gas pressure without a container. A storm system is gas pressure without a container. Wait, wait. My uh, What I'm saying, fight the flat earth, and listen very carefully, is that the gas pressure in the atmosphere is contained. Yes. So without trying to use the atmosphere as your example of gas pressure without... A well, yeah, because the airplane flies in the atmosphere. So you're using the atmosphere and saying, look, 
the atmosphere the atmosphere have a container and I'm the, saying at, the atmosphere is gas and I can demonstrate that that gas can have pressure without a container in different places I just did by describing so you, well two things there that are gas pressure without a container but if you want something else gas pressure without a container oh, right. right I could this I could fill up this cup right with sulfur hexafluoride and it wait, would is have the cup a container well what my, no, my point is I can demonstrate it's not a container because it doesn't have a top, right? Listen to what I'm saying. All right, it doesn't have a top, okay? So it's not a container. Are we agreed on that? And you've done this? Can I see the video? Um, I'm not. I'm just asking you to listen to me here. I mean, you can find oh, uh, plenty of videos. Talk hypothetical. Just well, theoretical. No. Just I could do this. Nathan, <laughs> do right. you believe me? Nathan, you asked for the, uh, an explanation, and uh, let me give the explanation, okay? Do no. you agree? Do no, you agree? No, I did not ask for an explanation. Right. All right. Okay. But no, do... I did not ask for an explanation. Nathan, do you agree? No, that... to fight the flat right. earth. Okay. Earth do... to fight the flat earth. Right. Let me. Did not ask for an explanation. Right. Don't Na need you to Nathan. explain. This is what conspiracy cats tried to do yesterday. Please don't try to explain it. Right. Just say, Nathan, I cannot demonstrate gas pressure without a container, or show me gas pressure without a container. That's okay. it. It should take 10 seconds. What do you right. have? Um, I can explain it to you and then I can go and find a video which no, does no, it. Okay. Explanation. Next point. Let's move now, on to earth rotation. Do you, do you agree that earth this rotation. is not a... Con All right. Okay. Earth, earth rotation. Earth, earth rotation. Earth fine. All right. All right. I'm going right. to leave. I'm right. going to leave if you just want to keep Nathan. trying to explain Nathan. what right. I heard in second grade. No, well, Nathan, okay. I just I just gave you plenty of examples of gas pressure that container, but we will move on. You want to see? You didn't give me you, one example of gas I, pressure without uh, a container. Oh, apart you from you just tried to talk about. It. Well, I told you that, how does an airplane create lift, Nathan? That you, if you can tell okay, me I how that's created. You can't use the atmosphere. No, but you're moving the goalposts because I can use the atmosphere. Uh, but anyway, you want well, you no, wanted you, you wanted Earth's rotation, yeah. Cool. No worries. Watch this. Earth rotation, Earth please. Is spinning yeah. one rotation right. every 24 hours. That means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. Can you pause the video, please? Oh, wait till it's device. finished. If we could simply I think get we've all one seen of these this. I, mean, I, 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 I just want my audience to see the rest of it. I just want my audience to see the rest of it. One of the people it's a few seconds. Actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. There you go. There's some evidence of the Earth's rotation. Okay, again, you can use whatever want but I, I will reassert that you don't know what scientific evidence is apart so, from the observation that i just gave you uh observations is not scientific evidence That's i disagree one in the scientific method so i disagree uh, right okay nathan can you tell me why right. that did not demonstrate earth's rotation observation Okay, uh, Nathan, phenomenon. Nathan, can you tell me why that didn't demonstrate that. Earth? No, actually, rather than skipping around and trying oh. to talk about semantics, actually address the point that I've just gave up to you, that a fiber optic gyroscope picks up a 15 degree per hour drift. Please explain that to me, because that's my evidence. I'm not going to talk about oh. the specifics of the scientific method. I actually want to talk about the evidence I presented. Okay, if you don't want to talk about the scientific method, I'll leave. Well, I, I understand that you don't understand the scientific method. That's fine. But I would like you to actually comment on the evidence that I presented you. I mean, that's only fair. I've just presented yeah, you some I evidence. Is I, was showing, I was showing how that that's not scientific evidence. So I can leave or I can show you how that's not scientific evidence. What do you want, Craig? Well, you can it's actually explain to me why it doesn't demonstrate the rotation of the Earth. That's fine. That, that's what I would like. All right, great. Can you go on mute? Can you go on mute while I do that? Yeah, yeah sure. Just demonstrate why it's not the rotation of the Earth. Okay. Excellent. So what would be the observed natural phenomenon for Earth rotation according to this evidence? Uh, the Sagnac effect. So sag, you're going to say Sagnac effect. Mm -hmm. so, so not Coriolis. No. Okay. So where in nature do we observe the Sagnac effect? When light travels. 
when light travels. Mm -hmm. And it's so in rotating reference travels, ring. So, so when light travels, so the observed natural phenomenon of travel, that's interesting. You consider the sun to be a light? I consider the light to be a nuclear um, fusion powered um, source of energy so that light, though, gives the earth 490 quintillion light. joules of energy per hour. Um, part of that nuclear fusion. Right? Well, yeah, part of the nuclear okay, fusion so byproduct. Light, wait, the, let me uh, give my when answer. When light travels, part of the nuclear fusion byproduct is photons. Degrees. Yes. Um, what light are you talking about traveling 15 degrees? So when you, light you, travels, are you mean you mean the stars so in the when sky? Light travels, That's. I'm not talking about the stars in the sky. I'm not talking about what's in the sky. I'm talking about the light within that gyroscope moving according to the Sagnac effect, demonstrating oh, the 15 degree oh, per hour so shift. So just light in gyroscope. Okay, where in nature can we see light in gyroscope? Well, we have to create tools to actually observe things that we want, Nathan. All right, we can observe the Sagnac effect in other parts of the universe. Then we can take tools to actually confirm the things like that. So we know what the Sagnac effect is based on our understanding of light. We have therefore created a tool that can observe the natural phenomenon of light shifting when a rotating reference frame is underneath it. Okay, so I will so ask, I'm, I'm going to ask you the question again. How did that not demonstrate the rotation of the Earth? Why did that gyroscope register Wait, a 15 degree per hour shift? Yeah, okay, so uh, we know that light moves according to Sagnac effect, right? And then mm -hmm. you you made the, the gyro so that we could see the Sagnac effect. So I just want to be clear, unless we make the gyro, this is not observed in nature unless we look at the sky, no. right? Okay, so where in nature do we observe this? When light travels and there's a rotating reference frame. Nathan, you're talking semantics and you're dodging the point here. When light travels. Okay, when does that happen? Can you show me? Yeah, within that gyroscope. Oh, so I'll repeat one more time. So this only happens not in nature, but when you make the gyroscope, right? Well, when anything that registers a 15 degree per hour shift happens, Nathan. All right, I'll ask you okay, the question. Well I'll ask you the question once more. All right, it's a very, it's a very simple yes or no question. Did that demonstrate that the earth was rotating of course not why not what well, what right okay better better, yeah, better no. a, a better question for you is why did the gyroscope register a 15 degree per hour shift okay well have you seen a feral cell or a supercell yeah so we can agree that electromagnetics can affect light, right? Mm, yeah, uh, but that's contained within yeah. a... But Nathan... Yeah, just say it, Craig. That's uh, what a cell shows. No, you haven't actually answered my question. Why did that gyroscope register a 15 degree per hour shift? Because electromagnetic waves are not going to interfere with the fiber optic gyro that was used. Round and round we go, Craig. I won't. You won't let me respond. So we just no, no, you, in you, circles because you, you've actually not responded. You're not telling me why the gyroscope registered a 15 degree per hour shift. I just you just conceded that electromagnetic forces can affect light. Okay, can you show me this electromagnetic force that moves apparently 15 degrees per hour? Well, have you ever looked at the sun? I'm not looking at the sun. I'm talking about the fiber optic gyroscope. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a man-made device. I don't consider that scientific proof of anything. Well, that's because so you don't you understand scientific it. proof. Natural phenomenon, Nathan, is not what you think it is. Oh, yeah. It's just making a gyro and watching a 15 degree per cool. hour right, deviation right. in a laser. Yeah, because and that claiming... demonstrates the Earth's rotation because that's the only thing it can demonstrate because it demonstrates a rotation of the thing it is physically touching because that's how Sagnac works. But I get it. You're not going to have that, right? You don't like that evidence of the Earth's it's rotation. It's not scientific evidence. Yeah, so, no, and so, I didn't even get to the fact. What's that, the hypothesis, Craig? The, the, Wait, the what's the hypothesis? 
that the earth rotates. But cool, wait. right? Nathan, it's cool. Wait, you don't, wait, you don't wait, like that wait, one. We'll move wait, on to a different wait. one because I've got loads. No, I love that one because it's not a good proof. But you didn't oh, even let very... me get to my second point. All right, what's your second point? I, I was still on the uh, no natural phenomenon on your side, other yeah. than the fact we have a natural observed phenomenon. You don't. Oh, I do. So, I have a natural I'm observed phenomenon through. that the Earth rotates at 15 degrees per hour. I wanted to, nobody's uh, seen that with their eyeballs. I'd like, or nobody feels the Earth rotate either. It's not, not Why, a phenomenon that Earth, yeah, the floor well, is rotating. You don't nobody feel constant movement, curve. Nathan. You don't feel constant movement. But we're going to move on for rotation, Great. and nobody we're going to go to Earth's curve. curve. Okay, you want to see but some. But it's not a constant movement. Where it, there is a change in angular velocity. Of how much? Of a lot. Of how much exactly? So as you're going fifty-six thousand miles an hour around the sun, as the Earth rotates and you flip sides, you actually change direction, and you're going like a hundred and eighty-eight miles a second. It's super fast. I was just mm, doing the math no. with Bob here. That's very, oh, okay. very wrong. Right. Yes. The Earth is not traveling at 66,000 miles an hour because miles an hour compared to what, Nathan? Speed is relative. Okay. And the Earth itself okay. rotating is one reference frame. And that is a constant rotation. The, in one way, you are correct that the Earth's orbit around the Earth isn't, the Earth's orbit around the Sun, sorry, isn't uh, a constant speed. There is a slight change of about 1% um, during its uh, closest and furthest parts away from the Sun. Um, but it's Excellent. not something, so reference, so, but it's not noticeable. Linear. Sorry? A reference frame is linear, Chris? A reference frame is linear. Depends on what you're talking about, Nathan. Now, we're going to move on to my other, uh, my evidence of uh, curvature. What do you mean, what am I talking about? Through the next hole. Our reference frame is linear, Craig. Why are you bouncing around all over the place? So, right, you can't answer any of my questions, so we're going to have, we'll go with the next one. You can't stay on one point. Well, that's oh, it's because I demonstrated my points. You should only be able to see it when it's in No, you haven't demonstrated anything. You just say you're going to explain it. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it. An explanation is not a demonstration. It is if you understand so we did a laser test. I mean, I, you know, we did a laser test is, at 17 miles. Um, Just redid this test, the mirror observation at Lift up your lift up your light Yesterday, way above your head. Greg, Are you paying attention to what's going on? Because I'm going to want you to explain this to me. I was in that documentary. You want me to watch a documentary? I, I I'm, I'm aware that you were in that documentary. Now explain to me how that didn't demonstrate the curvature of the Earth. Are you going to watch this documentary that you were in? So yeah. that you can tell me about how you were misrepresented? <laughs> well, you weren't misrepresented, and Jaronism wasn't misrepresented in any, any way there. He did the observations there. So please tell me what just happened there, how that did not demonstrate that there is curvature to the Earth. Yeah, of course. So um, I wasn't there, so I won't talk about observations that I wasn't there to do. But oh, Jaren because that, that's not there. how science works. No, no, no. The thing is, I do my own observations. I need to leave people stuck. So I know you're disabled and have a hard time getting out of the house or whatever, Craig. I'm still measuring I'm the not. entire planet, though. Do you know that I'm measuring the entire planet? <laughs> no, you're yep. affirming the consequence. No, no, I'm, 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 no I'm measuring the entire planet. Um, no, with, you're affirming uh, the consequence. With, currently, I have uh, 1,200 and something people that are involved. And we are That's going... Guys are we are going to repeat the Eratosthenes experiment, but with so many data points. And then I actually have a flat earth model that has been mapped and I have a globe earth model that has been mapped and I'm not going to affirm anything. I am going to put those data points onto both those models and see what happens. So Neil deGrasse Tyson already said that that works on both models. With now, two you points. Have a small with two points, Nathan, not with over a thousand so points. If you have a small localized sun, Craig, then basically, and it's so funny that you guys want to look at those, just look at water, large bodies of oh, water. Oh, no, 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 we're not talking about water. We're going to stick on how 1,000 yeah, plus Neil data points. Said, with, yeah, he, he was talking, he said with two data models. points, with two data points, Nathan. I, I'm having over a thousand data points. You, do you, do you understand you guys, that, that um, 
that's going to make it impossible. And, to... and here's the thing. I have actually invited flat earthers to get involved. And I hope that you will, Nathan, as you like to do your own experiments. I would like on the day for you to do what everyone else is doing and take a measurement of the angle from the shadow of the sun at your local noon and get involved. And and... No, because there is no affirming because I am programming it onto two models. I am going to take the data Whoa. points and I'm going to program that onto a flat plane. And I'm going to program that onto a globe. And I am going to let the data speak for itself. There is no affirming the consequence. There is no making assumptions. That is letting the data lead you to a conclusion. Okay? Hey, Kurt, or Craig, do you want to talk about things in the future? Or can we talk about things I've already done? Well, that, no, I just want to one. Uh, that's cool. We can talk about things you've done. But will you get involved yeah, in the experiment cool. I'm doing? That's a cool story, Craig. You're going to do some t look at the sky. Are you going to get cool. involved with the experiment? I would, I would yeah, love, I would, I would love to, I would love to have your data point, I'm right? Get super involved. Yeah, fight the flat Earth. I'm right behind you, bro. Well, no, because if you the Earth, wait, 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 one sec. If the Earth is flat, then your data point will help prove that. If the Earth's flat, then these data points will show that the Earth is flat. So, can I, can I count on your, your input? Can I count on your mm -hmm. data point? Yeah, of course. So Capri de Bombay Beach is 17 miles. If you include a refracted hidden height, 128 feet should be hidden. But you can clearly see the mirror. And this video is on my website, guys, on my YouTube channel. Laser test, 17.65 mile Salton Sea sick. observation. So when people show you Jaren's misrepresented on six, three mile laser experiment, flashlight experiment, whatever it is. I mean, is, you're not explaining. You're still not explaining how it didn't Craig, demonstrate the curve of the Earth, Nathan. You're just going, well, I've got another experiment that, that shows different. In what way? He was how, misrepresented. How, how was he misre misrepresented? Please tell me. The people that made the documentary lied. Craig. In what? Right. In, with they, that, in that, with that footage, what did they do to lie? Please tell me. I would so love to know. Said, when he said, "Hmm, that's interesting," and everyone thought. He proved curvature. That's actually from a different part of the experiment, the observation that he was doing. No, it's doing. not. And no, they... it's not. He was. He had the camera in his hand. Yeah, <laughs> there was another part of the observation where he had the camera in his hand. Craig, you don't understand how video editing works. Oh, I most so certainly I do. I don't know if you've seen my videos. <laughs> I, I know you get all giggly and like super right. excited because Netflix told you Jaren proved the curve of the Earth <laughs> oh, in very, miles. Very, very but much did. If the um, Earth so was curving, just that that image just destroys your laser nonsense. But carry on. What is that image? That was a laser bending. Oh, really? A laser bending? Do that? Yeah, yeah. So how'd you um, do that, Craig? <laughs> well, that was actually Mick West from uh, Metabunk. Oh, okay. And could you define dextro rotation? Mm -hmm. When you Excellent. answer some of my so questions, when you answer one of my questions, I will. Wait, you just showed the image. You don't want to talk about dextro rotation. The audience can go look up dextro rotation themselves. Right. You don't want to just tell your audience what dextro rotation is. Do I need to tell them? Go on then. Oh, listen, listen to the fingers. Look it up, Craig. Also, look up Levro rotation and how oh, he yeah. created an artificial <laughs> end. Oh, right. Okay. I'm sorry. You're complete. I was just looking up the, yeah, Levro rotation. You're completely misusing what they yeah. actually are there. That's very interesting. Yeah, please, guys, do look up Dexter rotation because that will actually disprove what he's trying to show with that. Um, Dis wow. Yeah. I'm talking about disprove. Yeah. Um, hey. the, the, guys, hey. just use the formula for the first what person. It says? If you want to use this formula for a specific rotation with the wavelength for that light, then that would be fantastic. I'd like to see the maths on that. Uh, um, Nathan, do you I still tell everyone what dextra rotation is, or do I need to tell them? Well, dextra rotation and lever rotation used to describe the rotation of plane, plane polarized light. Now, in this reference frame, in this reference that you're talking about, you're trying to explain why the light is refracting in such a way that it's going back down on itself, whereas you're trying to um, a, conflate it uh compare it to uh, lever rotation which is actually about changing the interference patterns of light within its own wavelength so um not really applicable there i would submit yes dextro rotation is not applicable to earth's atmosphere because we do not live in sugar water mm. that's true but we do mm. live in a we do live in an atmosphere of a gradient which is something i've still not heard explained 
Yeah, of course. It's a gradient of pressure, and you can't pressure without a container. So you haven't demonstrated. Uh, the thing is, is like you're looking for an explanation. Like, please, yeah, please yeah. tell me, tell me something to believe. Forget explanations, Craig. Experiment. An, you don't an, have an experiment. Nathan, an, aer an, an airplane flying is an is an observation and a demonstration of gas pressure without a container. A storm system. Uh, is a demonstration, a natural phenomenon that wait, it's created on wait, its way. Are you no. assuming space is real? Earth is uh, contained in this. I don't. I don't need to. What I am doing is okay, giving so you what. Uh, wait, break it down. So, Nathan. Wait. Don't don't talk over me. Let me explain what I'm saying here. You are asking me for a demonstration of gas pressure without a container well right now in the world there are storm systems all over the place they have different pressures to the air around them they are a different gas pressure that is a demonstration of gas pressure without a container well technically it's not because gravity is the done? container but you're going to ignore gravity are you done yeah for now okay Live in a closed dynamic system. The Earth's atmosphere is an inhomogeneous anisotropic body of gases. So yes, we do have storm systems and stuff, but it's all contained because there is pressure. The necessary antecedent for pressure is the container. So uh -huh. any example where gravity Craig is a container. Wants atmosphere. Gravity is what? a container. Gravity is a container. Gravity is what is containing the atmosphere on the Earth. Gravity is the force that is creating the pressure. That is your prerequisites are met because gravity, gravity is the container. Well, gravity is an apparent gravity force created by the mass warping of space time. Well, um, as confirmed by George Musser in my interview with him, gravity is the warping of space time by mass, which manifests as an apparent force with an acceleration on Earth of 9.8 meters per second squared, which can be measured everywhere and has been demonstrated over and over with the Cavendish that there is a gravitational acceleration between masses. So, yes, gravity can be counted as a force, which is the container that is holding the atmosphere on. And explains the pressure gradient, because the pressure gradient which we know for a fact, at least at the top of Everest, there's a few degrees, uh, a few PSI difference. We know for a fact, without having to go into space, that there a is a pressure gradient. gradient. And yeah. a, pressure, so a pressure gradient, a pressure gradient is something that requires a downward acting force to have. So, but yeah, when you go up in pressure, there's more or less pressure, depending on where you're at in elevation. But you're yeah. just measuring the pressure, Craig. You're measuring so the you atmospheric have... pressure. Your barometric pressure yes. is what you're measuring. Okay. Yeah. And pressure. the higher so and and the higher you go in uh, in uh, an altitude, the, uh, yeah. And gravity is a container, as I've just said. Uh, what define gravity? Gravity is the warping of mass by space time, which manifests as an apparent accelerating force on Earth of nine point eight meters per second squared. Warping of okay, can, where can we see the warping of the mass space time, please? When you see an eclipse, um, the warping of space time was actually um proven when what uh, I can't remember exactly which eclipse it was, but uh, relativity itself was mm -hmm. actually clarified with the predictions of one of the eclipses and then observing it. And oh. even relativity uh, itself, which confirms space time, has been um proven well at least there's been more evidence towards it with the uh imaging of a black hole uh even more evidence of relativity is in the constant detection of gravitational waves from ligo so their space-time warping has been demonstrated many many times um could you tell me the difference between ligo and the michelson morley experiment well, LIGO is kind of a massive Michael Morley experiment, and Michael and Morley experiment got rid of any key, any of Aether, that's for sure. Oh, so LIGO is just a massive Michelson Morley experiment. Basically, right? the uh, principle is pretty much the same, yeah. And the Michael and Morley experiment okay. and said then, that there wasn't any Aether. So you also your second evidence was the black hole from fifty-five million miles away. Mm -hmm. the, the the imaging of that was a very good confirmation of relativity. I told you so, but I'm going to say it anyway. I told you so. I've made a think about... Do these look similar? Videos.
Sunblack. Not really, no. You don't think those look similar at all? I mean, they're both circular, but. Oh, that's interesting. All right. And then the. I mean, so there's lots of things observed, that are circular. You said you observed the bending of time during the eclipse? Yeah, um, the bending of space-time relativity was confirmed during uh, one of the, I can't remember which one it is. Let me just get the um, citation for you, one second. Um, is this all assuming that the sun's 93 million miles away and the moon's no, we don't, 235,000 miles we don't, away? We don't, we don't need to make yeah. that assumption because the measurements have been made. Um, oh, so, okay. They measured? Yeah. They measured to uh, the sun? Yeah. Craig, how do you measure to the sun? Is that like a really long ruler or, or a tape measure? <laughs> how did they do that? Craig? Nathan, Nathan, that's a really, really silly thing to say. Um, are, are you in Australia right now? Measure. Nathan, are you in oh, Australia? Sorry, how they measure the Na right, Nathan, no, are you I'm in, in Denver, Colorado. Right, cool. And um, do, have you ever taken a ruler and a tape measure and measured all the way to Australia? No, but I don't claim to know the distance. You said that they measured oh, the distance oh, right. to so, the sun. So, I'm you, so, how they so are, you, are you saying that we cannot measure the distance from where you are to Australia? No. Without, without no. a physical rule? Straw man, are what the hell are you even talking about, Craig? Why well, you, would I say we can't measure the well, distance to because Australia? You, because you just told me we can't measure the distance to the sun, but we absolutely have because we've got tools for doing that. Just in the same way that we have tools for measuring the distance to Australia. In fact, there's a robotic probe so, that's uh, that on the way there, well, pretty much there right now. I'm going to ask the second time. I'm going to ask the second time because Craig just loves to deflect and talk about other things. Craig, oh, no, how did you that, measure too. the distance to the sun? Well, um, one of the first times it was measured was uh, using transit of Venus and uh, then using simple parallax oh. and trigonometry. Uh, there's, but, but at the moment, oh. the most, the, the, oh, okay. the best evidence we have is one of the robotic probes sent by NASA, the um, Solar Parker probe, which is oh, okay. so close to the sun at the moment that it's pretty much within its corona, traveling at about 2% the speed of light. So, so NASA probe, uh, not empirical because you and I can't verify that. So we'll just stick with the first one, the Venus transit. Um, please tell me about that one, how they do 93 million Wait, miles I'll, away. I'm, I'm just getting you the, uh, the general relativity thing first. You bear with me and try and stick to one thing at a time. Uh, Wait, doo -doo -doo. I'm asking one thing at a time. You said the transit of Venus proved yeah, the sun. I'm, st I'm, still, I'm still on the, the, confirming general relativity with the um, observation of the eclipse. So let me just get that. Do 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 bear with me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But using are you guys assuming space and ninety three million mile away sun? And that's why we went to the distance to the sun, Craig, is mm. about the eclipse. No, I'm just talking about observing things and making predictions based on that. Uh, yeah, you're talking about lending. observing the sun and the moon, and I'm asking you how you calculated the distance to well, the sun. You, you are you paying to... attention? Yes, um, but I'm, attention? Tr I'm trying to get you the citation, Nathan, so that I can explain it to you properly. But we're, we're using Venus, the parallax. You, you use two locations on Earth to measure the parallax of Venus, and then you, based on that, you can figure out how far you are to penis. And, penis? Sorry, ugh, I'm tired. Venus. Um, Please clip that where I said penis people, that'd be funny. Uh, so then yeah, you can use parallax uh, measurements for, when you use two points on Earth and you basically get a triangle, measure the parallax, figure out how far Venus is, and then using simple trigonometry, you can calculate the distance to the sun. That's very, very easy. Okay, did you guys uh, measure how big Venus is for this? Well, you can do that with parallax, Nathan. Oh, okay, so you measured Venus parallax. How, how big did it end up? Well, I don't have the figures here right now, like the exact numbers, but that's the process by which it was done. Okay. So, like, none of this stuff seems confirmed, right? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. It is confirmed. You could literally just do a Google search. But I you said know. none of this is stuff you've confirmed. You that don't have any of the data. Like that, the doesn't, that doesn't matter because that's this. not how science works, you Nathan. Done this. That doesn't matter you because that's not, that's not how science works, Nathan. Oh, okay. Well, right. when I do science... I, you, I'm you don't, about you, what don't I can do do, you don't do science. You don't you don't do science. I'm I'm sorry. You just but, said a NASA probe yes? is your proof of the distance to the sun. It's a tool that is being used to measure that. It's a very accurate tool. Um 
And frankly, I've got no reason to not trust what NASA say, considering the amount of technology that NASA <laughs> have given to everyday life. Um, Nathan, let, right. let, let, me, let me ask you a question. You let me ask okay. you, let, let me ask you a question. It, it, it's probably, Craig, it's no. probably going to be your last question. No, I, I, let, like, let, I, like, I know, I, I know. And, and, and I want you to answer a simple question for me. Can, can you name yeah, any things that NASA are responsible for inventing? Who cares? I can tell you a million things they're responsible for faking. Well, that's not what Bubbles I'm asking. I'm, I'm asking. I'm a, yeah, that's well, an appeal to emotion. Uh, I'm a, to emotion uh, fallacy. No, oh, no, no, look at all, all the great things they invented. They're that, so wonderful. You got It's not an appeal NASA. to emotion. I, <laughs> you're acting like a child, Nathan. I'm right? just asking if you're you can kidding. actually name anything that NASA have have done that's good for us, because I can actually name over 200 things that NASA have invented that have bettered humanity. And they frankly, no, they day. don't steal anything because they've got 18,000 oh, employees that need to be paid for a job. 18,000 oh, employees yeah. that go to work every day. Do they just go and like party All with right. hookers and blow? You're right. Yep. What, what do those right 18,000? Right. Nathan, what NASA's do those eight, super cool, man. What do those 18,000 people do? Cool. Go NASA. We love you, NASA. Maybe Can you we'll go back to the moon. And 2024 maybe yep. we'll go back to the moon All right. in 2024 are you able to are you able to answer a question what do those 18,000 employees do <laughs> come on what do those 18,000 uh, employees so i went to sydney holland's house she's an ex nasa employee who realized the earth is flat and she had a lot of things that kind of like led her to be suspicious about nasa while she was working there like, for example, she was following the guys who worked in the photo lab, and they were laughing about how people still believe that we went to the moon landing, and she thought that was strange because uh, she, she still believed in the moon landing. And that was actually what peaked her in Flat Earth was her mom, did you know we never landed on the moon? And she goes, oh, you know, that's interesting. I remember the people in the photo lab talking about that, but she still thought it was crazy. And so she was watching some moon landing hoax videos, and then she tripped on some flat earth videos and she actually earth her. And there's numerous NASA employees that were just compartmentalized and then ended up becoming flat earthers. So mm. you asked me what I think people at NASA do. Well, they do their job, Greg. And they they, they do their, their job. jobs. They, uh, they do their jobs. So that they're not stealing money because even if these people are compartmentalized, like you say, Nathan, they're getting paid to do a job. So that's hardly stealing money when they're paying people to do a job. Even if those people don't really well, know what they're doing, they're still getting paid to do a job. Now, if you're saying that they're just stealing this money, at, what are they, where's that money going? What are they doing with that money? Nathan, putting shit into space costs a lot of money. And space is real because uh, Red's Rhetoric has himself seen a launch oh, go yeah. into space with, uh, yep, 100%. Because what we can... Are they parabolic? What we can do is can we, demonstrate can that there is zero PSI. Would you like me to show you the video? the video? Of the I, I can show you the video can I see of. The time lapse can you what? Sorry. Of the launch. Just oh. Show me the time lapse video of the launch and how parabolic it is. Which launch? The new one. Any launch. I'd like to see a time lapse of a rocket launch. Isn't parabolic. Uh, well, Red's has got a entire launch from start to finish that he oh, filmed great. himself he hand tracked it i'm sure really you've cool. I'm, I'm sure you've seen that one yeah the one that actually shows the uh, boosters coming back down no do you have the time lapse of uh the the launch though or no i've got a video from start to finish that i can show okay. you would you like to see that cool okay let so me get it what did, what did the rocket do well um in the one that uh, the newest one the rocket went up um, deployed its boosters and the boosters came back down whilst the payload carried on to the ISS. But in another one that I could show you, in fact, they've got two Wait. side by side, um, where uh, the the gases coming out the back of the rocket are being illuminated. And what you see as the rockets increase in altitude oh is God. that the gas at the Craig, back I'm of the sorry. rockets... Well, Nathan, well, you, you, I'm, Craig, I'm you, sorry. I literally can't hear you rant anymore. It's you, so boring, uh, you, you asked I'm me. Sorry. You asked me. So I tried. Do you want I me know. to show you the video I or tried. not? Do you want me to show you the video? No, I just, 
I, I want to get on with the rest of my day because listening to you ramble on about cool. so, space and so NASA, you're, you're going to run away and I'm going to get a win here. Brand. Oh, yeah, you got a win, bro. Yeah, yeah. Mark it up as a chalkboard is a win. I can show I can show you I can show you right now that there there's one hundred percent evidence of space. Would you like would you like to see evidence of space? I told you Nathan, I told you how gas pressure about a container happens. Um, you didn't demonstrate it. Telling me isn't a demonstration, Craig. Or you want me to demonstrate gas pressure about a container right now for you in front of your eyes. Look what I'm doing. I'm creating gas pressure, Nathan. Oh look at all that gas pressure I'm creating without a container. Fuck's sake. Did you just use the atmosphere again? Yeah, because that's pressure with the gas. Yeah. So I just told Craig 10 times how you can't use the atmosphere. No, I can I use the atmosphere because that is something no, that is gas and you can create pressure with it. That's the thing you're trying to prove, Craig. That's the thing you're trying to prove. <laughs> um, right, anyway, let me get so this video for you. The thing you're trying to prove as your evidence, that mm. circular reason. No, not at all. You're it's just demonstrating more. gas pressure without a container, Nathan. It is exactly what you ask for. So stop no, trying uh, to the dodge the point. Does the atmosphere have gas pressure? The atmosphere has a, a, yeah. a, a gradient, sure. actually, which you still haven't yeah, so, explained. So it's contained. So it's contained. Because the necessary antecedent to uh, gas pressure is a container. And gravity is your container. So there you go. That's no worries. Define gravity. Mass warping of space time, which manifests as an apparent accelerating force. We've been through this. Yeah, I know. And we saw a black hole 50 million miles away, uh, light mm -hmm. years away, and then LIGO, which is a Michelson Morley experiment. Which, yep. Yeah, um, how, very... how, how come the Morley experiment? How come the Michelson Morley experiment? Are you going to say that the Michelson Morley experiment detected the bending of space time? It certainly didn't detect the aether. Because there's no such thing, and that was disproved oh. with the Morley. And then again with the Gales and Morley ex uh, the, uh, experiments, um, and then later on with the experiments into relativity by Einstein. So yeah, we don't need to worry about the aether because that's been thoroughly disproven. There's no such thing. So how do electrodynamic tethers work? How you tell me, and how is that relevant to the uh, shape of the planet? Do you know what an electrodynamic tether is? Why don't you tell us, Nathan? Because you obviously want to. Well, NASA uses them. I just figured since you love NASA so much. Well, how about spider ballooning? Have you heard of spider ballooning? You mean where a spider can change the electrical current of its uh, uh, web? Yeah, that's that's fantastic ways for spiders to actually get about. Um, but that's a very tiny electromagnetic force that you're talking about there. That isn't anything to do Great. with gravity. Okay, so spider uses electrostatic forces in the air to do uh -huh. what, Craig? To move. To move or to fly off the ground? To, to move off the ground, yeah. Yeah, so and what's um, your point? the spider... My point is, you say the ether doesn't exist, and you don't mm -hmm. know what electrodynamic feathers are, and spiders are literally using the ether to fly. No, so they're, not using the ether. The... They're, they're not using the ether because there's no such thing. They're using the electromagnetics of the planet. Electromagnetics of the planet, and where are those electromagnetics located? Oh, well, there we have a massive electromagnetic field all around us. Several layers of it, actually. Massive, right? And how's that generated? Mm, you know that, Nathan. Come on. You know that, Nathan. You're trying to how's debunk that generated? A... You're trying to debunk the model, so why don't you tell me? Because we all know, so why don't you tell us? And you're, you're, still, well, you're, you you're, still, you're still missing my point about gravity and that their gravity is a thing. And actually, didn't Bob say can that gravity was a thing? Thank you, Bob. That was nice of you. Can you demonstrate? No, I, that's why I asked you to define gravity. Because gravity yes, I is agree the mass warping of space time. Oh, you, you agree there's a force? Yeah, it's just not bendy space time that we've so, never observed. And what is the force? What is this 9.8 meters per second squared? that accelerates us towards the Earth, the same force that can be demonstrated in two masses on a horizontal plane, i.e. the Cavendish experiment. What force is that that can act in two different ways like that? So do all objects fall at 9.8? Um, roughly, there is little differences around the Earth based on the centrifugal force, 
but it's approximately 9.8 meters per second squared everywhere on the planet, yes. So, so why are we adding M1 plus M2? Shouldn't the mass of an object affect the gravity? No, it does. Right. See the the relationship. The, 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 wait. The relationship between M one and M two is what the gravitational forces are. Right. So the way that 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 function works is that the the sum of the total masses is what the gravitational attraction is. So if the first M M one, for instance, is the Earth, which is a large mass, and the second M uh, M two is an insect. Okay. The sum of those. Uh, masses is what causes the gravitational effect now because the butter the the insect doesn't have a large mass it won't have a large gravitational force acting on it because there isn't as much mass for the force to act on but that acceleration of 9.8 meters per second towards the earth is still there however because the butterfly doesn't have much mass it can create a force with its wings which can overcome gravity of course until it stops flapping its wings and it falls back down but that accelerating force of 9.8 meters per second squared never goes away but it's it's, a, it's relative to the mass of the thing so um it, like the, my phone it, this is actually quite light okay but this which was made for me is pure aluminium and is pretty heavy this has got more mass so this has got more of a gravitational force acting on it but the 9.8 meters per second squared down, is the right? same sorry does gravity ever cause objects to move horizontally uh, in the Cavendish experiment, yes. When you, wait, when you wait, do, can wait, 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 wait. Let me. You, you asked the question. You asked the question. No, you just called it an experiment. Mm -hmm. Where is the observed natural phenomenon? You can't tell mass me attracting I mass. observe it in nature. Mass attracting I, mass. You can't tell me I observe it. Show me that in nature. Sure. There you go. Mass attracting mass. Craig, I don't know if you heard me 30 seconds ago, but I said, does this gravity force ever cause objects to move horizontally? And then you just reverted back to dropping things down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm asking is, does a massive object ever cause another object to gravitate towards it, Craig? Yes. Yes, it does. When you use plumb lines, uh, you can actually see the, for instance, um, if you hung, there was an experiment done, I can't remember exactly where it was, I'll have to find the video for you because it's an interesting one. But it was an experiment done somewhere in China where they hung plumb bobs off of a building to measure the gravitational attraction. And the, the plumb bobs actually weren't vertical, they were towards the building because the mass of the building was attracting the thing that was falling down, showing that there is a horizontal attraction between masses. And that is basically a, replica, um, a replication of what happens on, in the Cavendish experiment. Because in the Cavendish experiment, um, no, let, 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 me just fi let me finish Wait. my thought. Nathan, please let me finish my thought, okay? Wait. Show me the plumb bob experiment. Show me the plumb bob experiment. I, I would have to find the video. I, like, but let me, okay. let, well, me finish my, let me finish my I thought. I got time. Find let the me, video. Let me finish my thought about the Cavendish experiment. Find the video. I don't even want to hear anything about the, the, the video. What do you mean? The, the way that... I, I have to find it. Find I don't know video, where it's... Craig. No, because I'm going to finish my Find thought. The video. Nathan, I'm going to finish my thought. No, no, I don't now, with the, with the Cavendish experiment, you. You, you, it, you it is you horizontal. Okay? It's horizontal. I do not have the video ready. Nathan, this shut up. Proof of gravity, Nathan, dude. will you stop no, being a I'll child? You later, You're acting like a petulant little child. You're acting like a petulant little child. Let me finish my thought. Let me finish my thought. Are you going to show me the video or am I leaving? You can leave if you want, but then you bitch I'll me. That's up to you. Bye, Craig. Join the official flat cool. Earth and Globe discussion on Facebook. Right. We'll so see you guys in later. the Cavendish experiment, there's a horizontal. Email right. You've been destroyed call. here because you're running away like a little girl. Yeah. Yeah, right. Destroyed. Are you, are you, yeah, you going to run away? Are you are you going to run away or are you going to actually listen? Are you going to run away, Nathan? I'm, I'm going to run away. Everyone's going to see you run away, gonna like run away like a little girl. Everyone's going to see you run away like a little girl. Are you are you going to run away? Are you going to run away? Yeah. Okay then, right, I'm gonna carry on explaining. So in the Cavendish experiment, you've got right. a horizontal plane uh, because you have to remove the, the gravitational force. So the whole thing is acting on one horizontal plane. Is he gone? Little girl ran away. Well, he got thoroughly fucking destroyed. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> yep, yep, hip hop hippie, he raged quit. He ran away like a little girl. Now, I'm actually gonna look for that video. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Alright, how uh, that was fun, guys, because Nathan's like a little girl. Um, plum bob. This was a video that I found when I was first looking into the flat earth nonsense. Anyway, right, I'll find that and I will post it in the um, uh, in the description another time. So yeah, Nathan ran away like a little girl. Uh, so Shilla in the experiment, thank you. That was one of the things I was trying to look up. Now you see how Nathan um, his his thing is to not answer questions. Ah, oh, yes, I should, that's, there's the one I wanted. Um, thank you. So I will actually link him that video because that, that explains exactly what I was on about. Thank you very much. Uh, but I just couldn't think of it right there. Sorry about calling him a little girl, but uh, I just wanted to see if he would actually run away because um, he did and that was funny. Uh, I'm going to read Super Chats because uh, I haven't really paid attention to that whilst I've been having fun with Nathan. Um, I liked using the evidences from his documentary against him. Thank you. Yeah, the, the Sicilian experiment was what I was trying to get for him just there. Um, I couldn't remember the name of it, but maybe he'd run away. He wouldn't have run away if I'd uh, found that, but he did run away. Right, now where did we get to earlier? <clears throat> right, so we have John Rapp, $5. Oh, Nathan, FTFE can do science just fine. You, on the other hand, need to go back to your equivalent of first year of high school science class. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, $4.99 from um, Kenya X122. The, would the atmosphere of a globe Earth not be its own container? Also, love how Thompson dishonestly redirects your answers. Yes, he does. You're right. Uh, $50 from Aussie Globehead. Thank you, Na NASA bot. Nathan must be wearing a, a, his diaper again. He is acting like a child. $10 from Tig Logan 16 Who let that homeless bum into their apartment? Oh, I think he's staying with Bob at, from Globebusters at the moment. I really hope Bob was watching that because um, thanks, Bob, for letting me use your evidence for the, for the earth. <laughs> uh, $5 from Janie. FTFE, bye for now. Not staying with this child harasser, abuser, harasses children over the school fence. He's a deviant who should be shunned. Um, I actually haven't seen that video yet. Someone mentioned it to me earlier. Um, I might do a response because that's one of the things that pisses me off the most. Flat Earth should be kept away from fucking children. Uh, I don't know if you saw my video, my recent one, um, King of the Flurfs is Dumb as a Bag of Rocks, but it's where Mark Sargent did a call-in show with a girl, uh, with a, a little eight-year-old boy, sorry. Uh, and he's like, yeah, okay, I'm a Flat Earther. And it's just like, I hate it. It actually broke my heart for that little kid. <laughs> Look at his stupid face there. Look that side. You know. Um, Ten dollars from Ra Raven Zero. The Snapdragon Eight Thirty have three billion transistors for the size of a fingernail for a phone. The science behind it is complex. The science behind the Earth, uh, all value is vast. Nathan, you can't get all easy. Yeah, he doesn't understand anything. Ten dollars more from Tiglo and Sixteen, like super fast, bro. One dollar from Tyler Terrell, no message. Ninety-nine cents from Kirk Bastic, no message, and another one ninety-nine cents. Four ninety-nine from Kano One uh, X One Two Two. You measure the distance to the sun using proper calculations. Math can let you accurately predict measurements you couldn't measure by hand. Two dollars from the logical hillbilly Nathan. How much rent is JM charging you? <laughs> no, he's at Bob's house, I think. Nineteen ninety-nine US dollars from Thomas Miller. Nathan, you don't have a job because hiring you would have an uncomfortable urge to throw you out a window three minutes into your interview. You wouldn't get in the interview. One ninety nine from Jen Morgan. Nathan is juvenile. Five pounds from Kevin D. That's it. There's no debate to be had. This is the last time I listened to the lunatics or are desperate for the exposure. One ninety nine from Jen Morgan. Stop insulting little girls. I apologise to all little girls unreservedly. You are all way braver and smarter than Nathan Thompson. Uh, just check no more have come through. 
Nope, that's all we've got. <laughs> let's, have, let's just have a little ch look and chat what, what's happening. Um, yeah, Hip Hop Hippie, me and you need to have our show down, but um, I'm going to arrange you and team first um, after you've apologized. Uh, Rivet says, Bob should check his house, make sure the silverware hasn't walked off. <laughs> yep. Hip Hop Hippie, man, you guys are mean. Well, we didn't just run away from a debate, did we? Uh, Nobel Prize for Gravitational Waves. You owe me a debate. Yes, I do, Hip Hop Hippie. That will happen. Um, you just saw how I destroyed Nathan, though. Do you want that to happen to you? Uh, FTFE, have you seen Jism's mirror experiment to prove the flat Earth? Which one? Um, I've seen so much stupid stuff from Jaronism. Uh, I bet he ran to his echo chamber telling people he totally owned you. Yeah, except for he couldn't even explain what the uh, Sagnac effect was or how it related to the rotation of the Earth with the gyroscopes or what the, you know, detection of gravitational waves and the imaging of a black hole were actually relevant for. Um, and if anyone can remind me of the, the experiment with the, with the eclipse that I was talking about, because that's just slipped my mind for a second, I want to pop that in the description as well. Well, guys, thank you for joining me tonight um, for the debate with um, Multiperson3141 and Why You're an Idiot. And then it was supposed to be between me and 33, UC33. I understand he had technical issues. I don't understand how joining VMix is so easy. So we're just going to call him Glitch Made for now. And if you're there and you want to try and arrange it again, try and locate a computer that doesn't run on mice and cheese. And if it does run on mice and cheese, then um, try not to get an out of cheese error by actually feeding them. Could you continue explaining? Could I continue explaining what uh, how the Cavendish experiment works? But it's 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 all you know the the thing has to be set up in one horizontal plane so that uh gravity is acting on the whole thing downwards as one then that means you can actually measure the gravitational attraction on a horizontal plane which is what i was trying to say to him um it's a new one where they think the reflection of sunlight off the mirrors proves the earth's flat goodness me Yeah, um, that's what he needs to apologize about. We're not going to talk about that on my channel. Apart from an apology, of course. Uh, anyone else? Let me just have a look through the chat quickly. I um, want to say thank you to a few people for watching. All my mods that have been in there. Stringer News, thank you always, sir. You are amazing. Um, Heat Shield, yes. I Again, I unreservedly apologize to all the girls. <laughs> You're all way smarter and braver than Nathan Thompson. Uh, Nathan works at evidence if they use tools, but his evidence requires tools. Yes, of course, because, you know, tell me which natural phenomenon, according to you, Nathan, allows you to do a laser experiment. Um, it's fine for you, but when I try to invoke tools and measurements, no, 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 no. I'm assuming the consequence. What the actual fuck? All right. Soccer Starry did this proud. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, guys, thank you, everyone, for watching. Marvel Girl, thank you, as always. Um, over the next few days, I'm going to start getting involved in Discord more. Uh, I've got plans to, you know, add my Patreon and everything to it. And then I want to set up this. In fact, Marvel Girl, if you're there, um, in the Discord, can, can you get a room prepared for people to join that want to talk to the Flat Earthers in my stream for next week? Um, and then we'll have a chat maybe in the next day or so and get everything else added. But yeah, if you want to join my Discord, just go to bit.ly forward slash um, FTFE Discord. Um, Wednesday, I will have a new video out, uh, another collaboration with Brainy Beaver on that guy. Uh, it's episode 20 of Flirts Are Idiots. Wow. Um, I'll also have another video out Saturday, which I think is about Daniel Pratt. I can't remember which one I put in my folder. It's pretty much Daniel Pratt. Tomorrow, there's going to be a live stream on Team Skeptic's channel, which I'll be on. Um, and yeah, thank you very much, guys, uh, for, for watching. And, and again, I can't believe that I've got coming up on 12,000 subscribers. And I can't believe that I've passed a million views on my channel. Um, I'm absolutely over the moon. And I would be nothing without you guys watching. So I hope you all have a good night. I'm going to go to bed because it is 20 to 4 in the morning for me. So I will leave you, as always, with this. Remember that stupidity 
is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the fight the fight. Fight the flat.